have built a few gauge one live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part 11 of the gauge one GWR Prairie Tank scratch build. Um, we finished off the last episode just making arrangements to fit these uh, the, the guide on this holds these slides this holds these slides in place um, and earlier you've, we've uh, I've been concentrating on connecting up the con rods and the piston connect and the piston con rods etc um, we're at a stage now where we've got to start doing the same for the slides for this slide valve uh, we need to start making arrangements to uh, have this connected and again this is connected by a series of links that come from this there'll be a, there's, obviously there's a center axle in here and so there's some eccentrics that run on this center axle that connect some links that move this that will move this backwards and forwards and we'll see a lot more of this as things progress but initially the first thing I'm going to need to think about is the position where this first arm goes to. So what I mean is I say we've got our there's our frame here and we've got the piston sitting there like that and we've got the rod coming out of the slide valve. Well on the real thing, and I will do the same here, you've got an arrangement that sits on here. Uh, let me think, it's like a, a bracket. Like a bracket sits here. And there's a, well, this probably should be a bit higher. Like that a bit higher. There's a bracket that sits here. Like that. I think it's called a pendulum. They've called it a pendulum. And this will swing backwards and forwards. Now because also it's swinging in an arc that'll have to have a joint on there so that goes back and forwards and as I mentioned this arrangement is driven from this axle here and there's an eccentric that sits on here and from this eccentric you have the rod runs up on the inside connected to a similar pendulum on the inside of the chassis. Hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about, it should become a lot clearer as we progress through this stage of the build. But that's what I'm going to do next is to start on this pendulum and this bracket arrangement that sits on on the chassis, on the frame. And as you can appreciate there's a lot of very tight for space here because we've got this bracket it goes on here and supports these two slides so this pendulum or this arrangement has got to sit about sit about the I've had a quick look at the the drawings I have and they give some indication but they're not really giving exact position where this is going to fit so that's again that's going to have to be measuring that off the job so I'm going to start with this bracket that will fit on here that connects that will connect to this um, slide valve I've raided my scrap box and these two pieces are going to be used for the actual mounting part of the bracket that fit on the frame so we'll begin by just milling these down into a, a rough shape here's just moving on now from that lump of brass that I got from the um, from my scrap bin. I've milled that into a rough shape and you can see there milled that milled a step in there and the idea is that this fits on there like so just on there like that. So that's that bit. Now again 
what I've got to do now really is determine the length of this, there's a shaft on here that this rod goes through. Show you what I mean here. Now that goes through there and that fits in there like that. Now um, what I'm doing, I'm building this up a bit at a time really because I'm a little bit cautious on some of the dimensions for these and if I commit myself to weld all this up and find out it's wrong, I'm stuck then. So what I'm doing is building up this linkage gradually. Uh, so temporarily I put a little screw thread on here just to determine the correct position of where the shaft goes. Piece of steel here, this is going to make the pendulum. And what I'm going to do is make this into shape and this will be, I'll initially just screw this in, it'll be on a screw thread and once that's screwed in and held I will silver solder that in position so that's fixed. So all I then will be able to do is determine what the best length of this bearing needs to be. With the two pendulum pieces of metal, the two bits of mild steel strip that I've got here, these are going to be the two pendulums and you can see what I've done, I've drilled a, this is going to be a, a 10BA, sorry this is going to be an 8BA tapping hole that the rod is going to be fixed onto and this is a 10BA, this is going to be a 10BA hole probably which will eventually fix to the linkage on the slide valve. So the useful thing to do now to keep them both the same is I've just left the drills in so it allows me, if I make a cut, they're both the same length. So this is just what I'm going through at the moment now, is just filing them both down to the same, the same size really. And let's pop that in the vise there. And we just carry on filing these down just to get the shape. So this keeps, as I say, this keeps them as a pair. Now that's a good thing about them. Obviously the, ba the bad thing about them is if you scrap one, you've scrapped both of them. So that's the downside. But um, it's worth doing it this way to keep them both exactly the same. Just pop some, swing this round now. I want to get this radius on here. These now, the end the end of the pendulum roughly about the right length. I can start to just put the radius on this, just get the get a radius on here just to get the shape that I'm looking for. Now this will just be a a little filing job. I can just slide those out at the moment. They're held tight in the vise. But when I want to move these I'll just pop the drills back in just to keep them together as a pair. I mean, this is the process that you go through if you were making the connecting rods. As I mentioned in one of the earlier episodes, um, I've made connecting rods by hand. And this is the process you go through. You can make them as a pair and file them and shape them into the shape that you want. Okay, I'm going to take these out of the vise now. So I'll just pop that drill in, just to keep those the same. So after a little bit of filing, that's the shape of the pendulum, more or less, that we want. So what I can do now is just give them a little polish up and I'll tap a thread in the end of these. And you can see now I've made the, made the shaft little spindle that sits in this bearing. This spindle is too long at the moment but the beauty of this is I've not committed to the, the final fixed lengths. I can use this screw at the moment to determine exactly 
the length and distance of what this has to be. So when I've got that right, I will again silver solder this up and finish just completing the top of this bush. I've been um, experimenting now with the slide valve and what I've added now is a little uh, coupling end on here that all fits on. Uh, the other thing I've done and what I've determined is, and you can actually see that, I mentioned there has to be some form of articulation between the end of the uh, slide between the end of the the valve rod and the actual pendulum and that's what I came up with I'm not even sure you can see that it's a tiny little connection rod that I've made uh, go on there so you can see that we're almost getting into clock making territory here with some of these a uh, couple of these small police pieces we need here's the linkage assembled now uh, with our tiny little link to give us an elbow and you can see now that that pendulum though it moves through an arc that slide valve is now moving backwards and forwards and I say there'll be another pendulum if it's on the other end if it's on this side that will connect to the eccentric that will turn the that will turn this, that will drive this backwards and forwards. All right, this is, here we are now, with both the pendulums made. Uh, the pendulum on the inside. Uh, so you can see how that works. The pendulum on the inside obviously drives across to this one here. Uh, moves the valve backwards and forwards. And this is the inside pendulum. And you may have noticed now I've had to trim this down to size. I made this quite a bit oversized to start with because I wasn't really sure what this was going to be and I'm never quite 100% certain about these drawings. So you tend to make things as you go along and fit them from the job. So there we are fitted. Now the other thing I've checked as well, which has determined what this size is going to be, I've tried it. This is an old scrap boiler, but it serves a purpose in terms of where things are going to fit and the Great Western boiler is going to be an inch and seven eighths which is what this white uh, insert is here so that gives me an idea so by I know that the boiler will fit something like that and I'm not sure if you can see that properly but that just gives me enough room of an inch and seven eighths for this to fit on with the right amount of clearance. So the next stage is making the connections off the eccentric cams to this linkage here. <laughs> 